Africa is the second largest continent in the world in both size and population. There are 54 countries in Africa fully recognized by the United Nations, and there are about 2,000 different languages spoken in the whole continent, with some of them having several dialects. It's no wonder that the continent was once named the Mother of Mankind, or the Garden of Eden. With its diversity and rich culture found on the continent, there's an endless list of things to know and learn about it. From the ancient bones of Mrs. Pless to Homo Naledi, here are 15 shocking things recently discovered in Africa. Number 15. Mrs. Pless This human skull is one of the most famous skulls in the world. It was discovered near Sterkfontein in Gauding province about 25 miles northwest of Johannesburg in South Africa. Mrs. Pless' discovery wasn't a smooth one. Unaware of the fossil's presence, the paleontologists and archaeologists used dynamite and a pickaxe while excavating the site. This resulted in the skull being blown into pieces, and until today, some of the fragments are still missing. Even still, Mrs. Pless remains to be one of the most perfect skulls of an adult Australopithecus africanus ever found. Australopithecus africanus is believed to be a distant relative of all mankind, and their fossils prove that perhaps Africa is the continent from which all of humanity originated. Mrs. Pless is formally known as STS-5, and she only got her nickname when she was thought of as a middle-aged female when she was analyzed. But it appears that Mrs. Pless was actually a mister all along. After analyzing the skull's tooth sockets, they found out that the skull originally had large tooth sockets, which you would expect to belong to a male. Even after this research though, whether the skull belonged to a male or female is still highly debated today. We just don't have enough information to pinpoint exactly what he or she was when they were still alive. Because of this, she's been humorously dubbed by some researchers and historians as the skull with an identity crisis. Regardless of whether it's a Mr. or a Mrs., 2.5 million year old Pless will remain to be a significant discovery that could help us further understand our ancestry. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. Clothes Making Tools Have you ever wondered how our ancestors created clothes back then? Some archaeologists discovered these ancient clothes-making tools dating back 120,000 years, making these tools the oldest of their kind ever found. They found the tools in the Contrabandier Cave, about 12 miles from Morocco's capital. Each of the tools has been created so that they would be more efficient in sewing specific materials, like leather and fur. It's astounding to see the tools our ancestors used to create clothes. There are older and far more primitive tools found in Africa, but these are the first ones found specifically for clothes making. This simple discovery helped researchers to know more about the origin of human behavior. This shows that even back then, sewing was a behavior that we already had. Number 13. Mopani Worm Snacks Who's craving some snacks? This is the Mopani Worm, also known as Medora or Amakimbi. They may look stomach-turning for some, but these creatures are a staple part of the diet in rural areas, especially in Zimbabwe. In fact, they're even considered a delicacy in the cities. There are a whole lot of recipes for them as well. They can be eaten dry, fried, or drenched in sauce. If you're brave enough, you can even eat the sun-dried ones raw. These worms got their name because they feed on the leaves of the mopane tree after they hatch in the summer. At this time, the harvest season will begin. These worms are usually as long as a hand, and they're pretty thick. The locals would then handpick them and pluck them from the lower branches. Sometimes, the locals will also shake the trees to make them fall down to the ground. These worms excrete a brown liquid once they've been touched, so harvesting these creepy crawlies can be pretty messy. Then they're dried under the sun before being eaten or sold. And they're usually a hit. Aside from being accessible, they're also pretty healthy. These worms contain proteins, iron, zinc, calcium, phosphorus, and fiber. Who knew that these creepy crawlies have a lot to offer? Are you interested in trying these out? Will you sample them if you get the chance? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Number 12. Lake Natron Lake Natron in Tanzania is one of the most unique bodies of water in the world. This salty red wasteland allegedly turns animals into stone. But this is just a myth. The truth is still interesting. Lake Natron is one of the most unforgivable and inhospitable waters on Earth. It usually has a crimson color, which comes from the salt-loving organisms and algae that flourishes in the lake's waters. 
the lake usually reaches up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature that most animals find undesirable. The pH of Lake Natron is also as high as 10.5, which is enough to burn the skin and eyes of most animals that aren't used to its waters. For these reasons, plus the extremely barren landscape around the lake is enough to explain why no animal can be found around it except for one. Flamingos treat this area as an ideal breeding spot, and about 2.5 million of them treat Lake Natron as their home. So where exactly did the story about Lake Natron turning animals into stone come from? There was a time when a photographer spotted the remains of flamingos that appeared as if they turned into stone. However, they're actually just covered with chalky sodium carbonate or soda crystals, which make them look like they've turned into stones. There are concerns regarding the lake's preservation, because without it, the huge population of lesser flamingos would be extremely threatened. Number 11. Karoo Most of us probably already have heard of the Nazca lines found in Peru. Geoglyphs are astounding features. Usually, they're attributed to extraterrestrial creatures, but I think it's time we gave our ancestors more credit. Geoglyphs are incredibly hard to create, and most of them are seen as astronomical calendars and ritual sites. They're usually shrouded in mystery and a subject of debate. The magnificent geoglyphs in the Karoo, however, have no mystery behind it. Inspired by the Nazca Lines, Annie Snyman decided to create the Snake Eagle Thinking Path in the Karoo recently. She started the huge land art in September of 2014, and she finished her creation in February 2015. The geoglyph has one continuous line. It's a path that leads the walker back to where they started, allowing them to appreciate the environment of Karoo. The geoglyph symbolizes the unity of species and habitat. The heart of the eagle is formed by two snakes, which can also be interpreted as the wind or the water of the river nearby. It's pretty impressive considering the whole geoglyph measures 170 by 57 meters. The snake eagle thinking path isn't the only geoglyph found in Karoo. It also features the riverine rabbit thinking path, which is just as amazing as the first geoglyph. Number 10. Danakil Depression If the environment in Lake Natron is hard to live in, the Danakil Depression is downright extreme. Located in Ethiopia, this place is considered to be the weirdest and most inhabitable place on Earth. At first glance, the entire place looks like it's an alien planet or a gateway to hell. It's filled with sulfurous hot springs, salt mountains, and acid pools. Aside from extremophile creatures that manage to adapt to the extreme pH and temperature in the area, no other creature dared to reside in this place. In fact, it's an understatement to just call this place inhabitable. The temperature in this 160-mile-long bowl is about 94 degrees Fahrenheit on average, and it's rarely blessed by rain. The place is also filled with volcanic chemicals that make its water appear in weird colors like green, orange, and yellow. You can also barely breathe in the place because the stench of rust, sulfur, and chlorine is unbearable. The Danakil Depression is also one of the lowest places on Earth, being over 400 feet below sea level. Today, this place continues to attract travelers that want to explore the alien-like place as well as scientists and salt miners. Researchers have been eyeing the microbes in the area that continue to live in the depression despite the extreme conditions in the place. If they've managed to survive in this alien-like environment, can they also manage to survive if they're sent to Mars? Number 9. Vredefort Crater the Vredefort Dome, or the Vredefort Impact Crater, is the largest in the history of our planet. It's located near the small village of Vredefort. Originally, the impact crater had a diameter of a staggering 190 miles. This huge crater is the result of an asteroid that hit the planet. It's said to be the largest ever to strike our planet since the Hadean Eon, which occurred some 4 billion years ago. Sadly, the Vredefort Crater has now eroded away, and it's mostly flattened as time passed. Even without its once impressive size, it's still extremely significant as it's estimated to be about 2 billion years old. The crater has the only ancient impact site that shows multiple rings, which signifies just how violent and deadly the collision was when it happened. If the same thing happened today, it would be catastrophic. Number 8. The Nobel Street A street located in the heart of Soweto in South Africa is considered to be the most famous road. There's nothing special in Vilakazi Street until you learn about the people that used to reside on it. Not just anyone can receive the Nobel Prize, and it's seen as a very prestigious and special title. For this reason, 
Only a few places in the world can be considered the home of a well-recognized Nobel laureate. And yet, the Villacazzi Street was once the home of not only one, but two awardees. Villacazzi Street was once the home of two of South Africa's most recognized leaders, Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela. Desmond Tutu was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 because of his efforts in fighting the system of legislation apartheid. Nelson Mandela, on the other hand, is a well-revered leader who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993 for his efforts in the peaceful termination of the apartheid regime and for laying the foundation of a new democratic South Africa. Both of these individuals were known all around the world, and for this reason, many tourists often visit the former residents of the two highly renowned leaders. Number 7. Bungee Towers The Orlando Towers are already pretty amazing to look at. These giant cooling towers once functioned as part of a coal plant that ran for over five decades until it was decommissioned in 1998. The original power plant building collapsed in 2014, but these two cooling towers stood strong over the years. The towers were then given an awesome paint job that symbolizes the cultural rebirth of the community. From afar, the Orlando Towers already look awesome, but it doesn't only offer the aesthetics. The Orlando Towers also offer a thrilling attraction. If you seek an adrenaline rush, this is the place to visit. After reaching the terrifying and death-defying height of over 300 feet, people who are brave enough can walk across the narrow bridge between the two towers. From there, you can bungee jump, power swing, or even free fall if you wish. It sounds pretty exciting, but I'd rather just watch people perform the stunt. If you think you want to take on this challenge, you can find the Orlando Towers in Soweto, South Africa. The best thing? It's also just 1.5 miles away from the Mandela House, which makes it a perfect spot to get some excitement after immersing yourself in South Africa's rich culture and history. If you're afraid of heights, then you can just admire the painting of the towers and stay where your feet touch the ground. Number 6. Dead Sea Scrolls In 1947, a shepherd found the Dead Sea Scrolls, known as the oldest Hebrew biblical texts, and until today, the scrolls are recognized as one of the most significant archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. Recently, they found new fragments of a Dead Sea Scroll for the first time in 60 years. The pieces of parchment were hidden in a desert cave between 132 and 136 AD. Today, the cave where the scroll fragments were found is fittingly called the Cave of Horror. It got its name because of the horrifying and gut-wrenching scene archaeologists found during their excavations in the 1960s. They found about 40 skeletons lying inside the site. The discovery of these scrolls just shows how dedicated workers and researchers are to uncovering more about the history of mankind. In order to reach the site, workers needed to rappel down the caves, dig through them, and endure the dust and tight crevices just to get these fragments to add to the knowledge of mankind's history. Number 5. Bat-Eared Fox Let's take a break from the archaeological discoveries and appreciate one of Africa's lesser-known animals. This is the bat-eared fox, and it's arguably the most adorable creature that roams the land of Africa. These creatures have fluffy silver-gray coats, bushy tails, and a black stripe on top, although their most striking feature is their huge ears that appear to be bigger than their whole face. The bat-eared fox is incredibly small, they're only about 11 inches tall at the shoulders, and they have a length of about 31 inches. You can easily pick one of these guys up because they only weigh anywhere between 3 to 5 kilograms. Pretty light. Despite looking like they're cute and cuddly, these creatures can be pretty ferocious. But because of their size, they only prey on insects, small rodents, and fruit. They also have tiny teeth, which makes it pretty impossible for them to nibble tougher meat. These guys usually nap during the day in burrows, and they're active during the night. They roam the arid areas of southern and eastern Africa, but recently they've spread into the Cape Peninsula and Cape Agullis. They're friend-sized, but sadly, these cute foxes are meant for the wild, so if you're planning to take care of one, you gotta find an alternative. And now it's time for today's topic. Africa is the home of many wildlife creatures, so it's not that far-fetched to think that we'll discover new species on the continent. Take a look at this picture. It appears that these people caught an animal that closely resembles a monkey, but we can't tell for sure. With the way they're trying to contain the animal, it looks like they discovered something no one was supposed to see. Could this be a new species? Hopefully, if there really is a new species discovered not only in Africa but anywhere in the world, 
their habitats would be protected to ensure that we have enough time to study and learn more about them. As always, comment down below with the hashtag today's topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 4. Shoebill Stork Honestly, after seeing the Shoebill Stork, I don't think you'll look at birds the same again. When people tell you that they don't believe birds are modern dinosaurs, all you have to do is show them a picture of a shoebill stork. This bird looks prehistoric to say the least. Their name sounds kind of silly, but once you see these creatures, you'll surely find them intimidating. Some photos of the shoebill stork make it seem like they're CGI, but these birds actually exist. They're usually found in the remote, dense, and unexplored swamps of Africa. They got their name because of their shoe-like bills, but you gotta admit that they look pretty terrifying. We're only beginning to learn more about these birds as some of them have been taken care of in captivity, mainly because their numbers are dwindling. They're rare and critically endangered with less than 5,000 in the wild. These birds usually grow from 3.5 to 5 feet tall, and they seem to have a longer lifespan in captivity. In the wild, these birds are known to live for 35 years compared to the 50 years they live in captivity. These birds use their huge bills to create clicking noises as a form of greeting. They may look like they'll attack you any time, but shoebill storks are known to be kind of antisocial. They like solitude, and most of the time only one chick would be hatched from a monogamous pair. These birds just perform their duties as a parent and usually spend their time away from each other. The mated pair usually spend their time in their own territories, and they'll only join each other in preparing the nest and taking care of their young. If you ever get the chance to see a shoebill stork in captivity or the wild, consider yourself lucky. These birds are extremely rare and impressive. In fact, you might mistake them for a statue or a mannequin at first because they're known to stay motionless for hours, especially when they're trying to catch prey. Number 3. Adam's Calendar Adam's Calendar is located in the Blue Swallow Reserve in Elenzeni, South Africa. This stone formation is known by the locals, but not a lot of people know about its existence anywhere else in the world. It was first spotted by South African pilot Johan Heine in 2003, while he was flying over the beautiful Mpamalanga region in South Africa. During the flight, he crashed his plane into the mountainside, but through this incident, he stumbled upon these monoliths, now known as Adam's Calendar. This megalithic stone calendar is only accessible to a few people. You need to pass through the rough roads just to reach the site, but the view is breathtaking. The stones form a circle with a diameter of 100 feet. This site has been nicknamed as the birthplace of the sun and Africa's Stonehenge. The true purpose of this stone is still debatable, but it has been observed to be an astrological calendar, like most stone monuments scattered all around the world. However, its true purpose is shrouded in mystery and yet to be solved. Number 2. Oldest Human Burial In 2021, archaeologists discovered the oldest known human burial in Africa. They unearthed the remains of a child estimated to be three years old. The child was carefully laid to rest in a grave about 80,000 years ago. The child, lovingly nicknamed Mtoto, which literally translates to child in Swahili, was found with his legs tucked to his chest and carefully wrapped in a shroud. Mtoto also had his head on a pillow and was gently covered in soil afterward. Just like us, our ancestors that lived during the Stone Age share common practices and beliefs. They experienced grief and want to honor the deceased by giving them a proper burial. The child's family couldn't have known that through their actions, Mtoto would be recognized as a significant part of mankind's history. Back then, just surviving was incredibly difficult, and so the fact that a family used resources and exerted time and effort to bury their child shows how symbolic and sentimental they were. Aside from elephants, humans are one of the only creatures on Earth proven to show grief and attachment towards the dead. Number 1. Homo Naledi In 2013, we gained yet another breakthrough. Hidden deep within a cave in South Africa were the remains of an unknown species of human ancestor called Homo Naledi. Homo naledi is very far from us modern humans. In fact, they were very primitive. They had a tiny brain, ape-like limbs, and ape-like facial features. Even still, Homo naledi's existence is extremely significant in tracing and understanding human evolution. Homo naledi's fossilized bones were found in a cave called Rising Star, about 30 miles northwest of Johannesburg. By 2014, 
Over 1,550 specimens from at least 15 Homo naledi individuals had been recovered. Despite the number of specimens, we still don't know much about them, how they lived, how they survived, or how they acted. There's a lack of animal fossils or tools associated with Homo naledi, so we're at a standstill about this Homo species. Most of all, their placement in our evolutionary tree is still undecided, but through continuous research, we'll soon discover more about how Homo naledi was related to Homo erectus and other species in the genus. Which of these discoveries is your favorite? And do you know of any other interesting things found in Africa? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.